If you haven't planned for anything this weekend yet, we've got a few ideas for you, including a new eatery that sells prawn noodles. But first, what about this? An exhibition at Gilman Barracks for fans of photography. And here to share more is arts correspondent Tomun Lee. Tomun Lee, give us a glimpse of what we'll see at this exhibition. Yeah, so this is an exciting exhibition of photographic prints by artist Lavender Chang. Um, you spoke of a glimpse, um, that's a very fitting way to describe it because it's titled A Glimpse of Radiance from Under. Um, what Chang has done is carry a camera with her on her journeys by bus and on foot, and she's taken these very beautiful, exquisite, long exposure shots of the city. So it seems very surreal, very otherworldly, and if you look at a prince, they almost look like they were painted. Um, and, and they're very layered because they were, they were long exposure shots. Um, she spoke to me about how she sees the act of creating these images as um, painting the visual strokes of the ambiance of these places she has visited um, on these journeys. Um, so I found this a very contemplative show and definitely worth a visit. Um, it's on till May the 7th at Faust Gallery at Gilman Barracks, the art enclave close to Alexandra Road. So head down if you have time. And there are lots of other galleries in the area, so you could swing by and catch some of the other shows that are on at the moment. Well, thanks very much. That was arts correspondent To Wen Lee. After eating his way through Singapore's East and ST's Food in the Hood series, senior food correspondent Wong Ayok is back and he has a new food pick for us today. So Ayok, tell us all about these prawn noodles. Okay, this is a new prawn noodle store uh, in Sambawang. It's called Felofa. Felofa is, is a Cantonese name and it's the nickname of the founder, uh, Mr. Te King Hua. But people who have eaten uh, who have been to Sambawang before and eaten at the Sambawang uh, original white bihun may remember this prawn noodles because uh, Mr. Tay used to run a little store in his uh, white uh, bihun eatery and it was called Sambawang prawn noodles. But three years ago, he closed it down because his son took over the business and he expanded it and rebranded it as white restaurant. But now the white restaurant is like sort of stabilized uh, his Mr. Tay's children has decided that it's time to bring back the prawn noodle. So that is the background of Felofa. And this time they've made it a bit more deluxe because you get different versions. Uh, and the most expensive one is called the signature Felo noodle. It costs $20, but it comes with abalone, which uh, they didn't have before. So you have abalone, you have jumbo prawns, you have braised pork ribs, and you can choose whether you want it in soup or dry. I mean, it's really luxurious, uh, $20 for prawn noodles, but it's good. Uh, but for people who don't want to pay so much, uh, like myself, actually, I, I don't really need abalone in my prawn noodles. So I would pick the $16 version, which comes with just the big prawns and the braised pork rib uh, together with the noodles. And I, I think that's good enough for me. Uh, what I really like about this prawn noodles is that the broth is so rich. Uh, it's really tasty. That, that's because they simmer the prawn paste and the pork bones for uh, up to 10 hours. So uh, you get really, really flavorful soup. Uh, besides prawn noodles, the shop also sells uh, something that they created called prawn zuki. It's based on this Japanese dish called ochazuki, where you have like uh, uh, rice, crispy rice and uh, seafood, and then they serve it with either uh, matcha or dashi, but in uh, Felofa because they do prawn noodles, so they, they use the prawn noodle broth which is very good too. I mean, you add the prawn noodle to rice. So instead of noodle, you get rice, uh, soupy prawn broth uh, together with the big prawns. So it's a very wonderful dish as well. Uh, but personally, I would go for the prawn noodles because I love prawn noodles. Sounds positively yummy. Thanks so much to senior food correspondent Wong Ayok. I haven't had time to catch this one yet, but the reviews are quite mixed for Pixar's new film, Turning Red, now showing on Disney+. Plus. Let's get Jan Lee's take on it. So Jan, the film is about more than Asian representation, isn't it? Yes. Um, actually, I would say the film is very much, uh, it's not so much like, a, oh, a Chinese or an Asian film. It is about a Chinese-Canadian girl set in 2002 
it's about her being 13 and becoming, you know, puberty. So actually it is a coming of age film more than anything else. It's just that it's set in a very specific era. It's set in 2002, a Chinese Canadian girl living in Toronto. And when she, she gets upset, um, this is where the sort of magical, fant- fantastical part of it comes in. When she, she realizes that when she gets upset and when she goes through like big emotions, like anger, embarrassment, sadness, she turns into a big red panda. And that's what she has to deal with like, throughout the film and, you know, um, and trying to overcome uh, her mother's very overprotectiveness, trying to overcome her mother's interference in her life and becoming her own person. All of that, you know, is talked about in the film. So it's very, very much a coming of age film more than anything else. And um, I personally very much enjoyed it. I know it is a Pixar film. Its target audience would be tween girls and family, families, but um, I actually very much enjoyed it myself because I saw a lot of um, myself in the main character, Mei Lin. Uh, it's a very specific character. So she is a big fan girl, and I'm also a big fan girl. So she loves this boy band in the series, called, in, in a movie called Four Town. Which, by the way, I really have to shout out the music that um, the movie gives to Four Town, which is, if I'm not wrong, created by Billie Eilish and her brother, fin- uh, Phineas. So um, it's very, it sounds exactly like music you would expect from a boy band in 2002. And it's very, very catchy. She draws fan art for her idols. And it, it's very much like, yes, this is fan fangirls at 13 this is exactly what they would do so i actually related to that very very much and as you mentioned some of the reviews are mixed uh i've read some of the reviews and i think some people have issue with the fact that it portrays um a girl going through puberty and there's some mention of uh young women getting their periods and some parents maybe find that a bit hard to discuss with their children but um I think it's fine. Like young women do get periods and, you know, kids as young as 10 or 11 might be dealing with something like this. So it, I don't think it's an issue at all, you know. Well, turning red, ticking all the boxes for The Straits Times' is journalist, Jan Lee. We have more live picks for you online, including film correspondent John Louis Academy Awards preview, who will win and should win at the Oscars. You'll find his piece at str.sg forward slash life.